Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. It's Polyester here. And today we're gonna have a tinfoil talk talking about the disappearance of the Observer. What? Dad, where did you go? You always read me my fog bedtime stories. And then one day you went out to get some milk and you never came back. And now you're on a milk carton. Where are you going to Observer? What is going on? So if you don't know, the uh, public test build opened this week for the mid chapter patch. And when you went to the area of the archives, you see that the observer's study is, the chair is turned over, his cushy leather seat is knocked over, the place is trashed, and he is missing. It went from this, what you would normally see when you went into a rift, to this, he gone. And what does this mean? What is going on with our observer? Why is he missing? Who did this to him? Let's talk about it. Okay, so first I want to play this bit here for you from this behind the scenes video about the Observer. This is from 2021, where Dave talks about the Observer here. Listen to this. He's been banished to the world of the Entity, but since he is invisible, thanks to the Oris, the special artifact, he is unseen by the Entity, so he's not in a normal trial like survivors and killers. Okay, so right there, um, Dave spells it out for us that the Oris is what protects the Observer from uh, detection by the Entity and allows him to be separated from the trials like the other survivors and killers. Well, you can see here in the tossed image of the archives, his study here, the Oris is left behind. He is separated from the Oris right now. To me, that's a big red flag that the Observer is in trouble. Okay, so here in the Tome 10 reveal trailer, this is one of the last times that we see the Observer with the Oris. He's looking over these memories and he's thinking about how he hasn't been grooming, so he's slowly turning into Jeff's stunt double, apparently, and he gets transported out of the library to this location here where he runs into Jigsaw, and the Tobin Bell voiceover is amazing on this, but somebody told me that this is just like straight up taken from one of the movies, but it happens to be. Hello. I want to play a game. Stories and memories are like pieces of a puzzle. Your obsession with other lives has undermined your own existence. Your life descends into madness as you desperately search for the missing piece. The piece that will reveal a way out. Here is my gift. A clue. What you have been looking for has been right in front of you, all along. You just have to look beyond your obsession. Will you continue to lose yourself in other lives? Or will you take a moment to see? To really see? Your mind can be your sanctuary or your prison. The choice is and Always has been yours to make. Okay, so we know that um, the Observer is desperate to escape the fog. And the Entity appears to the Observer as Jigsaw and offers up this gift as a way to escape. We know this is something the Observer wants. Now we can tell here that it's actually the Entity, right? The entity, can, I don't know, can the Observer not see this coming out of uh, Jigsaw's back here? But it's actually the entity. We know the entity is a big schemer, a deceiver. It has tricked many people into going into the fog. Felix following what he thought was his father into the fog. We see many instances of this where the entity is able to alter perception of our characters in the game and trick them into entering the fog. So is this one of those scenarios where the observer is desperate to escape and clings on to this promise of a, an actual way out from Jigsaw and then they do something and they accidentally wind up abandoning the Oris and getting tricked into the entity service and becoming a playable character in the trials? Or has something even more nefarious happened to the Observer and it wasn't the Observer's own doing going into the trials by um, 
by their own will, but being taken unwillingly. Let's look at this cinematic from uh, Tome 10 as well. Now in this final cutscene of Tome 10, we see the Observer's Tower here with some shadowy figures approaching and the Observer's just chilling out as he normally does. You don't see the Auras here, right? And just having some, uh, you know, relaxing golfing sessions and having a drink. And then we see these Cthulhu-like monsters with little tendrils coming out of their mouth, approaching him, sneaking up on him at the tower. He has been found, and then he winds up having to defend himself, and he beheads this first monster, but then we see that there are more to come. They are scaling the tower. He's been found, and he's up for the fight of his life, and it looks like it might be a battle that he did not win. So with the Observer missing, his place trashed, and the Oris left behind, it appears to me that we're about to see the Observer step into the fog as a playable character. This is a story that has been building for two and a half years through all of these tomes, and it isn't the first time that we've seen something like this. You'll remember that on a smaller scale, they told this story every Halloween through the Hollowed Blight about uh, the Pustula Petals, being able to make putrid serum and the ability to navigate the void undetected by the entity using this serum and that all resulted in the alchemist becoming the blight and it just kind of shows you that eventually the entity is going to catch up with you even if you're able to hide from them for a short time now would the observer be playable as a survivor or a killer well, with the rumor swirling that Hattie Carr is going to be the survivor, that only leaves the killer option open. Even if it is a say-it-ain't-so observer moment, what's happened to the observer here? Did this attack by those shadowy Cthulhu-like creatures spur the observer on to go for this escape that Jigsaw promised was there, and they fell into the entity's trap, and they're being tortured into service by the entity as a killer? I don't know, we're gonna have to wait and see and find out what's gonna happen. But I do think there is a bit of a clue here about the killer for the sixth anniversary chapter. Look at this. Okay, so if you hadn't heard, we had the public test build this week and the data miners went looking through the files and they pulled out the imagery for the banner for the sixth anniversary of Dead by Daylight. It has that imagery we've seen the last two years running with the skull oozing black out of it, which mimics the hash mark logo for Dead by Daylight that you see it in the bottom right hand corner here. And then we have this gold six. And a lot of people are talking about the imagery of the six because remember in the fourth anniversary, four looks like pyramid. So they think that the six must look like something too. And I've had people say to me, you just need to flip this image and then it turns the six into a J, which means that it's gonna be Jason from Friday the 13th. Or they think that the six mimics the the tail of the xenomorph from alien uh in that imagery or they think that it looks like the hook off of the hand of foxy from five nights at freddy's or they think that it could be the hook for Candyman. as much as i would love to make another Candyman theory video i'm just going to shy away from all that i don't think the six in itself has any imagery to go along with the chapter except if you look closer at this at the six it looks like it's all made up of a bunch of other tiny little sixes except for that one part there that kind of looks like a music note but for the most part what i'm getting from this is a bunch of sixes and to me this conveys that imagery of the dead by daylight multiverse an infinite amount of universes that the entity draws people into the fog from from parallel universes and we've heard rumor that this is going to be a lore heavy chapter so i think all of those sixes symbolize that multiverse for dead by daylight now i also want to take a closer look at the skull here the skull looks like what we've had the last couple of years except you'll note that there is this blue tinge on it and i'll say that everything that is connected to the observer seems to have a blue tinge on it not sure if it comes from the oris uh the oris is providing the blue tinge but there's definitely blue tinge whenever 
the uh, observer is checking out memories. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so whenever Dead by Daylight unlocks a new level of a tome, they put out a tweet with a mini cutscene introducing that chapter. And this is an easy place where I can show you all the blue tint here. So this is for tome uh, six divergence here. And we see that the pages are made up of this blue material here. As we go through, it's all like blue building blocks of whatever the Oris is. And we see the page burning in blue there and all of the blue around the book too. Like, look at this blue is everywhere, right? And the same thing if we go to uh, Tome 7, Forsaken, the glass and all the ice cubes that the observer has touched, putting them in glass or dropping them on the, on the floor while preparing his drink, all have that blue touch to it. Again, the burn in on the page to reveal the chapter, the blue surrounding the, um, the, the tome's title. And then we go here to Tome 8 Deliverance. Gonna be the same thing. The glass has the blue building blocks there. New page, ice cubes again, burning in. Same thing again. And then the last one here for Tome 10, the Saw Tome. By the way, notice that we're uh, doing away with the Roman numerals here. We have level four and Tome 10, no more Roman numerals. You see here that the saw itself, as well as the shackle, are both made up of this blue material. And this is how like the observer is accessing these memories. And then the same old thing with the blue burn in on the page. So I really think that this mimics that effect here that we see on the skull and that this is our biggest clue that the chapter is related to the observer and memory somehow. Definitely something has to do with the lore and the archives connected to this chapter. In my opinion, based on that blue tinge, that's your clue right there. The biggest clue of all, not the number six. All right, well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so very much for coming to my tinfoil talk and listening to all my theories about the disappearance of the Observer and what it could mean for the future. Um, I think we're going to get some more answers once this next rift opens. That should be in less than three weeks because who's going to tell us our stories? Who's going to talk to us about all these memories that we're going to see in the archives? So we're probably going to get a trailer for the archives that's going to hint around to what is going on and build up to this sixth anniversary chapter, which should be exciting. We've heard that it's going to be a chapter that is steeped in lore. And with the missing observer, you definitely have a lot of lore going on. So I can't wait to see what it all means. But thank you so very much for your time spent here. I always appreciate it. And don't forget to take care of each other in and out of the fog. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. It's a Gen Rush life for us. It's a Gen Rush life for us. Set a hiding, we do gens. Set a randoms, we got friends. It's a Gen Rush life.